Believe it or not, these are muzzleloaders. Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and last week I had the fortunate opportunity to head down to Bass and Bucks in Wabash, Indiana, and attend the first ever Hoosier Muzzleloader Classic, a long range modern muzzleloading match out to 750 yards. The match was set up with classes to arrange any kind of modern muzzleloader so that a somebody shooting a Thompson Center or a CVA break action muzzleloader weren't competing with some of the ultra modern smokeless guys. But all of the shooters that attended this year were all upper tier smokeless muzzleloader shooters. And I gotta say, it was a treat to watch. Before we go any further though, I need to preface the rest of the video here with a couple of things. The first being never, ever, ever, ever put smokeless powder into your muzzleloader. Odds are your muzzleloader isn't like one of these guys' muzzleloaders. These guys have spent several thousand dollars developing and getting parts specifically for these muzzleloaders and they are built from the ground up to shoot modern smokeless powder. If you load smokeless powder into a normal black powder, black powder substitute muzzleloader, bad things will happen and you seriously risk injury or death. Smokeless muzzleloaders have come a long way since the 90s and it's because of dedicated shooters like these guys treating it with the respect, care, and research needed to do it safely. The day started with a warm up period where shooters could get familiar with the range with targets set at 200, 350, 550, and 750 yards, there was enough variety to keep the shooters occupied. Targets from 200 to 550 were all on paper, meaning that each and every shot had to count. The weather was great during the practice period. It quickly became one of the hottest days we've seen this summer here in Indiana. Temperatures started to flirt with 90 degrees, and an unstable breeze really wreaked havoc with a mirage out at 550 and 750 yards. Even with speeds around 3,200 feet per second, the smaller caliber rifles had trouble fighting the breezy mirage. Targets from 200 yards returned after two 15 minute relays with strong groups. There were a few flyers, but each target was scored out of its top four shots out of a total of six shots on each target, allowing for some wiggle room when it came to the scores. By noon, the sun was high and the shooters were headed out to 350 yards. The breeze had laid, but the sun hadn't. On top of the mirage, shooters were dealing with their own bodies as sweat poured off of everybody. Even those of us behind the line couldn't help but soak our shirts with sweat. This extra challenge didn't shake the shooters though. It just became one more thing for them to deal with. Shots flew out at a record pace, cracking through the range before piercing the target and resting in the berm. Shooters were eager to get their shots off and cool off with water and wet towels between relays, all the while trying to keep their rifle stocks cool in the hot summer heat. At 550 yards, the pack was tight, but a few shots taken by the breeze began to sort the pack. At 2 p.m., the shooters set up for the 750 yard relay. They were shooting 12 inch gongs at 750 yards. And let me tell you, these were pretty small. I mean, you think about a 12 inch gong in your typical woods walk, set at you know 35, 50 yards, it's, it's really no trouble. But at 750 yards, even with the massive scopes on these muzzle loaders, it was gonna be a real challenge. Interestingly, with this relay, it was called a no cider relay. So you had five shots to get on the gong. If your first shot was a hit, you got two points. Every shot after that was one point if you hit. So even if you missed on your first few shots, you had some time to make up for those shots and get some points on the board. At the end of the day, Mark Clemens took home first place with an overall score of 122 and 4X. Steve Zoda brought in second place with a score of 120 and 2X. And third place, we had Keith McDowell with 117 and 2X. I had a great time and really can't thank the shooters enough for their generosity. When my wife and I got to the match in the morning, I explained to everybody, I'm, I'm here, I'd like to take some pictures, and I'd like to learn more about the smokeless muzzleloaders that you're all shooting. And several took me aside, showed me their rifles, walked me through their loads, their shooting process and everything. For me, smokeless muzzleloading is something I know next to nothing about, and it was really neat to learn from these guys uh, about this ultra niche of muzzleloading. Special thanks to Mark Clemens for letting me shoot his monster 65 pound, 45 caliber muzzleloader at 200 yards. Down here, put that dot right in the center, right on that right there. Okay. All right, that's where I want you to hold. Okay. So when you shoot this, I'm gonna make adjustment on your shot, so make sure you don't pull it. That's what I want you to do, it's ready to go. Okay. It needs to go up and down. Here's the mariner wheel, left and right, okay? okay. So you're gonna have to keep the same pressure on this cable cause it's, it's okay. not good. <laughs> What's wrong? You wasn't expecting that trigger, was you? No, that's good. That's a good trigger. <laughs> What'd you think? That's awesome. How'd it kick? 
Nothing. Nothing compared to your regular muzzle lighter. No. I mean, I got. I mean, that didn't feel any more than a, my 40 caliber flintlock. Yeah, good good follow though. Uh, yeah, it did. You move ahead. That's good. Yeah. So. Helmet. You nailed it. All right. So he shot pretty much right there. Hey, Mark. Wow. At 200 yards. Getting close huh. to <laughs> I'm happy to share that I cut the X-ring with my first and only shot with this rifle, though I think the rifle did most of the work here. As with every muzzleloading match that we see across the country, I'd really like to see more of these popping up. It's a great way to learn more about muzzleloading and meet some more people in the community. Special thanks to Steve Zoda for hosting this match. I'm really looking forward to next year's match, Steve. Once again, I'm Ethan and I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you.